and that's as far as the wrestling did. What I did was I intimidated a lot of people. Uh, All right, I'm hitting the record button. So slow oh, we got that I can't get shit. We got it. Well, my coffee's on. Uh, we are here at Lila Studios, Riff. Are you paying attention? No. Have you seen who we have on the show today? Wait a minute. That's Mickey James. We are going to... You just run my whole big introduction. Well, you you've never, right there. You never, you never introduced anybody. You I said miss, introduce. I said that's Mickey James. You just that's me. Was. We're just going to say that wrestling legend. We'll, just, we'll refer to you as a wrestling legend. Uh, Mickey James joins Lila Studios and Wrestling with Rip Rogers here on YouTube. Welcome to the show, Mickey. That's Alexis you. Lurie. That's yeah. Alexis Lurie. That's yeah, right. That's, that's yeah, who she, you were when you came to OVW. Yes, and I was. I, was. I still over. am in my heart. She was over. She was all right. She had that nice butt and little. Uh, hill, I did. The, I really the, worked the, it. The hillbilly uh, uh, shorts. You hillbilly know, shorts. The, blue, the hillbilly blue jean shorts. Uh oh. And that butt. <laughs> that butt was always protruded. Uh, the gluteus I know. maximus and gluteus medius was. I don't fire. know what happened. I got a. I, I had a child and then I somehow got a butt. I don't well, know you, what happened. You are allowed to do squats and lunges, you know. I am allowed to do them. I am. <laughs> uh oh, we're freezing up here. Really? We're freezing up. I don't know if that's, that's all right. Could be me. I thought Vicky <laughs> was on fire. She was keeping the, keeping the lions burning. I was. Rip, you got to be nice to our guest. Now. I am. Rip's always been a, a treat to me. Oh, that's that's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. So you, we were just talking a little bit before we started recording. You are from Virginia. That that's correct. It is. Yeah. And then you started, did you start training? I, I like to do a lot of first. That's kind of personally how we do. We don't do necessarily a whole live story. We don't really even get into a lot of like clickbait stuff. Maybe we should, but we don't. I don't know. Um, where that? did you first start training at? What was your first like wrestling school? I started training in November 98. I signed up at this wrestling school, but it was more a, um, so the name of the school was Kaida Pro. Keep your dreams alive. Kaida Pro. Uh, Jimmy Z was the trainer, and it's where I met Sanjay Dutt. Shorty Smalls was probably most of my trainer. A lot of people don't know who that is, but he was a guy that was in the Indies, Virginia, Carolina scene. Um, but that was my first year. But it was in the back of a boxing and martial arts studio. So the ring was not a wrestling ring. It was a boxing ring. Um but that's where I learned to first run the ropes. And obviously if you've been in a boxing ring, you know, the ropes aren't very tight. Um, yes. And uh, take my first bumps, which is not a wrestling ring. It's a boxing ring. So those bumps were very different. And then about a year after training there, um, I had met Joey Matthews and Christian York and, they suggested that I transfer schools up to Maryland. And so when I transferred schools, I started going to bone breakers, which is Danny McDivitt was the head trainer at the time. Um, and I trained there until I got signed. I trained there. Um, and then that really is what opened up a lot of doors for me because in Virginia, I was only really working Virginia scene, um, for the company I was working with. And I would randomly, there was a girl named Bobby Joe Persephone that, there wasn't a lot of females working on the indie scene at the time. So she and I were like partners in crime. So we would travel to Georgia for Bill Barron's for 25 bucks to wrestle each other at the old schoolhouse or to, awesome. I remember driving all the way to Nashville for Burt Prentice for 25 bucks to wrestle at the fairgrounds. And that was the first time I'd ever been in separate locker rooms. Cause I didn't even know, but he was still old school and had the heels on one locker room, baby faces on the other. So the only way you could talk is go back around the back of the building to the outside. Like, so you'd have to kind of go and walk a half a mile each way, you know, each wow. of you to meet in the middle to kind of, I don't know if it was really that far. I might be <laughs> exaggerating uphill both ways, um, but to go chit chat and then go back. So we didn't get to talk a lot, but luckily we, since we only really wrestled each other all the time, we kind of had our, but yeah. That's awesome. No, we, we froze there for a second. I think we're back now. Yes. Um, so we uh, we just had Chris Silvio on from Virginia, uh -huh. and then they came from there to uh, OVW. And then uh, Timmy Baltimore we had on not too long ago. And I think he Love. mentioned you being in Maryland. Yes, um, that's where I first met Timmy Baltimore. And he was coming in um, and he obviously, uh, you know, wanted to come in and do all the things. And Danny wouldn't let him get near the ring or do any for obvious reasons. Um, but I kind of took little Timmy Baltimore underneath my wing because I knew that he had this brilliance in him and he was so smart and he loved the business. Um, so I would honestly, I would do those all girls shows, those WEW shows, which 
were not great, but they were a good time. Right. And I would have him like manage me in a lot of those matches just to kind of get there and get his, you know, back in the back or whatever. And I, most of the time I just paid him out of my own pay, which, you know, oh, that was nice. Yeah. I just love him. So I still love him so much. And I think he's a brilliant man. Um, and he's got a lot to offer, you know, so hopefully. Yeah. Timmy, Timmy's over with the, uh, Rip Rogers show for sure. Cause he's a straight shooter. Timmy's a man. Yeah, he is the man. He's a man. He really is. Remember I wish... when, when he first gave him TV, I didn't tell him anything. Right. I said, Timmy, just do your thing. Yeah. He said, he asked for any instructions. I said, no, you'll, you'll know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So before, before that, were you always, uh, uh, did you know you were getting into wrestling like high school as a little girl? I mean, was that always like, yes, I'm going to be a wrestler? No, yes and no. So obviously I was a fan of wrestling through my father. My parents separated when I was very young, when I was like two. And so when I, my sisters and I, when we'd go visit my dad, wrestling was something that we would watch with my dad, with my grandpa, his father. Um, and it was just like a bonding kind of thing. And I remember saying during the commercial breaks, like, oh, I'm going to be a wrestler one day, like yeah. as all kids do. And then come off the couch with an elbow. I think <laughs> I'm really doing it. You know, then the three of us, my sisters and I would beat up my dad. Poor thing. Like every week he got a butt whipping. But um, I also was very much into my horses and I still have horses to this day. And I was very um, competitive. My grandmother, we um, raised and bred uh, Morgan horses and we showed wow. and competed in the ring. And so I honestly thought I was going to be a horse trainer and that's what I was going to do with the rest of my Like I thought that's as I grew up because I was so passionate and I was so I was pretty good at it, uh, but I was so passionate about it. And I do have a genuine like love and bond with equines in general. Um, but yeah, then as I got out of high school um, and I didn't have a lot of direction in my life and I had no idea and my parents, you know, we were not rich by any means. So it wasn't like I had like this college fund just kind of waiting for me when I graduated, um, which is why I tried so hard to get this honors diploma when I was in high school uh, so I could get like a a grant or get like some type right. of, you know, um, something, a scholarship or something to go to college. Um, but I failed trigonometry. Oh man. Horrible in math. So I, I remember going to high school when I was in high school, I was going full days because I was still taking French and Spanish. Cause you had to have so many electives and you had to have so many languages and you had to have so many arts. And so I did art the whole time. And I was in the viol I played violin for five years. And you did it all. I, well, because I was really trying to get, but I just was horrible, and I still am to this day horrible in math. I was a math teacher for 22 years. Just my son you know. is better at just, math than just me. Just to let you know, he that. is going to be eight <laughs> end of this month, and he Rip, is did you better have, than me. Rip, have you ever ridden a horse before? Yeah. Have you really? Mm -hmm. No way. You got to. I got to hear I this. I had a horse at my farm. Ron. <laughs> Down at like the Seymour one. Yes, when I had the farm. I didn't know you had a horse. I, I knew yeah. you had like nine million dogs, but I didn't know you had a no, horse. I had like sixteen dogs. And Would you scoot up to the microphone just a little bit? Twelve dogs and sixteen cats. I can't remember. Oh my God. <laughs> that was a long time ago. But I had a horse too. Ah, I yeah. can't see. What you was his horse. name? Huh? What was his name? I can't remember. Her name? Horse. Horse. Horsey. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I think I'm remember. calling bullshit on this story. No, that's like my dogs. I or, or it's like my my cats. I had uh, uh, Nubsy, Stubsy, Scrubs, Rub a Dub. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kiki, let's see my dog. Is but you don't remember son. one horse's name? No, uh, -uh. Huh. I can't. Uh, hell, that's how he wasn't responsible ago. for the horse. He just uh, go out there and pet its nose. You weren't out there cleaning stalls or, oh, or responsible. Hell no. Uh, -uh. uh, -uh. Mm. no. So g getting back to going to your first class and training, I like to ask people because I remember my first day I ever stepped in into the ring and practice. Once you started doing that, taking some of the bumps, especially in the boxing ring. I mean, did it hurt? Were you like, what the hell am I getting myself into? You remember oh, was, that first day going in? It was extremely painful. I remember, well, I watched first. I remember the first day I went up and I watched and I came back the next week and paid my money and See. said, I want to do this. Um, but I was watching kind of going like, whoa, this is pretty intense. But I've also fallen off of horses my whole life. And I, I really do think that the, you know, that that what my grandma instilled in me with training with horses because we had to train so hard and I fell off of countless horses and I would be like the test dummy as well when we were breaking a horse of who the first person was going to be on the horse was usually me 
um, after she got it to that level where she thought it would be safe for somebody. So I got bucked off a fair amount of times or just went flying because I was trying to go over a jump and the horse dead stopped in front or bunny hopped over it. Or so it wasn't the falls except for the first back bump, like the yeah. flip bumps I was fine with or like dirt those ones. But the going back, I, I remember really struggling with committing to falling straight on my back and I had to do um I think one of the first bump practices I did, I was holding on to the second rope and you get in that squatted position and you just try to throw yourself back off of that seated. Um, and I, it probably took me an hour straight of trying to do that to where I would commit to just going back. But whoever who really helped me perfect my bump was Dory Funk, I think, when I did the Dory Funk dojo. of, a, And he's the first one who ever said it to me like that was like, you have to attack the mat. Which Rip, I remember you saying that, um, but you have to attack because if you try to find the right way to do it, you just have to go for it. And yep. I think that that like that mentally stuck with me because I'm like anything you do, you have to commit in the ring. Like you have to attack it. You can't tiptoe around it or try to protect yourself. Yes, try to protect yourself. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. If you get too careful, that's when you get hurt, you know? Yeah, for sure. So you said then you went to Maryland and you got signed out of Maryland. Did you have did you have like tryout camps? Did, did um, agents just come to to, to different no. shows? No. Um, how, how did you get signed? Who, who was the phone call from? Can you take us through like actually uh, getting signed? Well, I did a bunch of camps first. I did a, a Ricky Morton, Bobby Eaton camp. I did the Dory Funk Dojo twice. I did a Ricky Steamboat camp. I oh, did wow. an East ecw dojo these were all like weekend or week long mm -hmm. camps that we would do um because even danny would tell me he's like you're not going to learn everything from me and and danny had only he's an excellent worker but he had only really been an extra on television an enhancement guy enhancement talent on television but um so he would bring in these talents to you know Right. to help his talents kind of get and he'd had some success out of it. Amy had went, Lita had went through that school. Um, Orlando Jordan, Jordan had gone through that school. Uh, he'd had a fair amount of people get signed out of that school. So, um, but it was really more just once I got there and I had to relearn a lot of stuff, you know, I had to relearn like that. I was just doing it wrong um, from my previous school and just being green and, and people who, weren't ready teaching people who weren't even close to ready, you know, just all the right. things that happen. Um, so uh, those camps really, really helped me out a lot. And then I was working for, um, I had done the first TNA pay-per-view and then I was working for ring of honor. I got into ring of honor when they first opened up and started running. And out of that, I started, and I was talking to Dr. Tom at the time, Dr. Tom was my, my point person. And I would email Dr. Tom bless his heart every other week and I would send him a new tape at least once a month and with my promo packet of please watch my tape let me know what I'm doing wrong what can I do um, and then I would ask him I was like you know anytime you guys are in the vicinity or it's driving to, I mean I was driving to Nashville from Virginia which is 10 plus hours you know for $25 so I was grateful if I yeah. would just get a tryout and a lot of times the women you know you only got paid for a tryout if you actually wrestled it wasn't like if you showed up you got money for showing up like I feel like that's kind of how it is now but you had to actually do physically do something on the show to collect a paycheck from WWE at the time so a lot of my tryouts which I probably did about 50 of them um were not paid. I think one was paid because I wrestled Don Marie. And that was actually the match that I ended up, I think was the catalyst of me getting hired from, but it was me. I was working with TNA regularly at the time and they were only doing month to month contracts. So in between that month, when I would be unsigned for a couple weeks or a week, um, then I would get to do a tryout in between. So it was kind of in that space, but it was because of Raven Raven saw me, um, at ring of honor when he was working with CM Punk and they were doing like some dog collar match or something crazy like that. If I can sit under, I'm still sponging, you know, um, if I can sit underneath the learning tree of Raven and learn through osmosis from him. And plus he's working this angle with Jeff Jarrett and I can learn from Jeff and it was just a, a, an incredible opportunity. So I said, yes, even though goth is not my realm, like I had, I had to buy everything from hot topic and figure out how to do this goth character. Um, but yeah, and that was 
that was when um, I got signed with WWE and I was supposed to go to Japan for three months because my impact, my TNA contract was up and they were just switching over to where they were going to sign talent for year long contracts. So it was doing month to month. And then they did like a three month contract and then they did a year contract. So they just gotten to that place where they were going to start signing talent to a year long deal. And I'd also had this opportunity to go to Japan for at a female dojo um, for like three months. And I remember um, talking to Dr. Tom about it. And he then, I, I think this was when Johnny Ace first came into that position in talent relations. And Johnny Ace was actually the one who called me right before my birthday. It was like August 27th or some weird. I just remember because it was like my birthday was going yeah. that weekend. And he's like, hey, we want to give you a deal. Oh, boy. I want to go to Japan, but I also want to keep my teeth. It was Johnny Ace who called me. JR was still head of talent relations at the time, but Johnny had just kind of stepped in that position. And I remember that goes, yeah, we want to sign you 500 bucks a week. And, uh, you can move down to Louisville. And I was like, Oh, when do I, uh, okay. Um, when do I have to move? And 500 bucks a week was, it wasn't great, but it was as much, if not more than I was making on the Indies were being a weekend warrior. And I just couldn't work at Olive Garden anymore at the truck stop <laughs> anymore. So, um, but yeah, he gave me a couple months to wrap up all the rest of my, he, the dates that he signed off of, which was like the ring of honor date, the MCW Maryland dates, um, and certain dates that I could wrap up. And then I had to be down there by October and that's wow. what I did. Yeah. Well, that's wild. So we don't do research here at Lila studios rip. I mean, rip, you should have probably smarted me up on this. I guess I didn't even realize you were in TNA before that you got developmental. I, sh I, I, I probably should have known that. I uh, was the first woman ever, which I was, green as grass the first woman ever in the clockwork orange house of fun match which was with jeff jarrett and it was myself and julio de Niro. and um yeah that wow, was that's like, awesome yeah so, it's and then wild. you went with raven so we just had uh nova mike bucci uh simon oh, okay. on the other day and he 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 kind of got his in with with raven as well he told us so yeah where you got did you ever cross paths with him there at ecw or was that a different time period um i had one tryout in that was like just at one time thousand okay. well I, it was a couple um but i remember and with ecw and obviously ecw was on the way kind of yeah out and i was originally um the intention was to sign me as Beulah's little sister. Uh, the, Tommy Dreamer has told me this story. So this oh. is the only reason why I remember my tryout being terrified, realizing I wasn't even close to ready. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea about etiquette backstage because that wasn't, I was still with Kaida at the time. So I'd only been wrestling like a year, year and a half, no business getting a tryout. Um, and I, especially on the etiquette side, I just had no idea. And that wasn't something that was truly really taught besides the handshake thing. It yeah. wasn't really taught at our school. Um, but I learned that as I transferred up to Maryland and stuff. So, um, yeah, I took like 50 DDTs. I would say 200, but 50 DDTs <laughs> in a row from uh. my key whip wreck. And I remember Paul was sitting there and Tommy sitting there, but they wanted me to be Beulah McGillicuddy's little sister who was just under 18. And apparently there was going to be a countdown clock of the days so like, until I turn 18, like throughout the, the show throughout mm -hmm. television until, and then obviously, you know, you know how ECW does, but that was the idea. <laughs> I just think it's and wild. I like, oh. I, Cause I mean, you've been wrestling for what you've been in the business 20 years or, or more or whatever. And just to hear, because everybody probably has seen you on, on top, basically, just to hear that you're driving 10 hours for $25. And I don't and think a little Ford always... Escort that I had to push the window up and I had to duct tape on the passenger side. I had to duct tape it so it wouldn't fall back down because, you know, the motor broke on the little button. Yeah, that's pretty well. Yeah. All right. So let's get into a little OVW time then. OK, so you get to OVW. Did you know anything about it? Did you know anything about Rip? Rip was Rip your original trainer there? Yes, he was. So you were in. Okay, I couldn't remember exactly. Um, Eight a.m. boys. 8 so what was your first impressions of uh, the hustler Rip Rogers? And, and did you know? Did anybody smarten you up at all? Did you know anything about him? How he was? Anything no, like that? No. So what did you think when you met Rip then? Uh, I thought he was a character. He <laughs> was hilarious, and so you know. And I say this because I feel like I come from a, you know, the businesses have changed so much, especially in the last 10 years. But 
I really did come from like a, an old school kind of mentality with wrestling. So nothing shocked me at this point. Like I had been in locker rooms where people were passed out drooling on themselves in the corner. So I'd n- nothing shocked me ever. Um, but Rip would pop me all the <laughs> but, time because he's brutally <laughs> on it. No, it was he's brutally honest. And I will say the the one thing that I probably loved and respected the most is that he never treated me like a girl. He never tre- he never molly coddled me or 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 beat around the bush. Like if he had a point to say he was going to say it and he was going to say it how Rip was going to say it and you either digested that or you didn't and uh yeah, it's it, it's it was definitely different. I had no idea what to expect when I got there. You know, I thought like, oh, we're going to have like there's practice every day. So probably, you know, two, three hours and I'll train and do whatever. And then I got to work on how am I going to make it to the next step? And one of my first day of practice, I remember it was, these are eight hour practices that we were doing sometimes. Weren't they ripped? Like we would be there. We would start at 8 AM and we would wrestle until about 3 PM, but not always wrestling. And one of my favorite drills Rip that you would do is the body part drill where we would all have to get around and he would have his whistle. And for two minutes, you would work an arm. And then for one minute straight, you would get heat on it. And then he would blow the whistle and then you'd reverse it. And then the baby face would do, but, but no bumps. And that was right. the catch, no bumps. And I was right. like, I say, I knew how to wrestle when I went down there, but everything that I learned, especially from you, Rip was like, just like this fine tuning of really, perfecting my craft and that's what i i'm so grateful for ovw because i think it truly made me a worker whereas a lot of people can wrestle but there aren't a lot that working is an art you know um that has been a very popular answer people say that all the time that that exact working the body part and then um taking it up a notch and and all that kick it in (laughs) yep rip give us uh give us your impression i know you've already told me some stuff now now let's see if you're gonna actually share it on this show here or not Talking about how good Mickey was. Yeah. Oh. Well, she already knows that I. What? Well, she knows how. I, you know, I think her, Serena, Gail Kim, top three. You know, no Pacific order. Uh, yeah. Speak up. Show some. I can hear. I can hear here. him. Okay. Can you hear? Thank you, Rip. I can. Okay. I appreciate that. That means right. a lot to me. You know. You know, I don't have to say you're a hot little bitch, do I? You know? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Uh, I try, I try to get him to talk, and then that's what he comes back. To. You know, I, my thing was, I want to make these girl wrestlers, girl wrestlers. So I want to right. treat them like guys, and I want them to work like guys. Right. So I want her them in the ring with guys that are bigger, stronger, faster. So that when they get in there with girls, they can dominate. Right. I want that mind to be fucking sharp of learning to call it in the goddamn ring. Yeah, which nobody knows how to do anymore. They don't. And they what really can I don't. say? Hey, guys, go two hours in matches. We did that sixty. What was it? That Broadway match? Who was it? Mike Mondo and God. There was a couple of them, but I just remember. Was it Jeter? I had a lot of that. that used had to be some, the, that used to be the norm. I was so glad. I, you, I don't think you ever got me for one of those sixty-minute Broadway <laughs> matches, and I was super grateful. But I tell you what, my cardio. I was in the greatest shape of my life in OVW because my cardio in ring cardio was through the roof. Was that was the, the thing roof. though? He never made us do like squats or any any of that kind of stuff. It was never or just bump bullshit drills. cardio. It was always there was no cardio. feet for a clothesline, yeah. ten bumps in a row. There was none of that because it was waste. That he's like, why those are wasted bumps? Yep. You it know, was always, I want it you was... to be able to do it without taking a bump because that's the art of a true worker, right? Like to be able to tell that story and then make that bump mean something rather than just by the time you got there, which I was very much on the same page because we had gone through several different trainers. And the one thing I hated um, after you left uh, rip was we had um, Bill DeMont would do a lot of bump drills of like one person in the middle and everybody feed in for a clothesline. And I'm like, I already know how to bump. That's why I got hired. Like, I don't need to know how to bump. I need to know how to work. There's a difference. Like I already learned how to bump. I've been bumping for a while. Like if I, you ain't figured out how to bump by the time you got <laughs> here, you're doing something wrong. Right. Like, and I would get so frustrated because I'm like, I don't need to take all these bumps. Like we're taking, you know, 
80 bumps in practice before we even lock up. Like, how does this make sense to me? I got not that I love Bill. I'm just saying that that was like, I was like, I feel like I'm going backwards. Like, what is happening? Where's Rip? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You're did I don't think I ever taught you a move. No, no, No. I was a babysitter. (laughs) Is that what you were? I was a babysitter. babysitter. You know what I mean? Uh huh. I was like a school teacher with a bunch of first graders. Right. But now you go out and practice with this girl. No, I want you to practice with a guy. Now work same size. So mm-hmm. you can lead to learn. You can you can follow. You can lead. You can work like you're both six foot tall. You're both 280 pounds. Or right. And just different ways, just different ways to work. Right. But, and, I, and I know you've only got so many bumps on your bump card. So I'm trying to save your life. Right. And I'm your career. A, right. Right. But. You know, if guys are assholes, they just have you bumped. Right. So I never, uh uh-uh, no Mm -hmm. way. No, you know what, another thing that you used to do, and I'm like, I feel like I avoided this like the plague because I saw you do it so many times of, I don't know if you, if he did this to you, Um, we would do E-Town showdowns or wherever, you know, what was the gym that had um, Dennis the Menace up in the up on, on painted on the uh, gym saint Therese or is that saint was it saint Therese gym oh i um, maybe i don't remember saint Therese was like that church that had the i can't remember it, well they had dennis the menace painted up on the school thing right yeah okay. but if he we they would have the matches and obviously we drive there and everybody girls and guys put the ring up girls and guys did all the things and had to clean up after we were all a team and we did it together but um if he saw you talking to your opponent one time, not even for one minute, he'd, he'd let the heel go out. I, you did this countless times, Rip. And I was like, oh, oh. oh I'd send somebody else out or, and then, and then re- he, or tell him to reverse roles. <laughs> yes. No, I'm no, I'm going to make you good whether you like it or not. Yeah, because I'm going to throw did, you in the water and you're going to learn to swim. Because he did not want you calling a bunch of spots backstage because these matches like that's for television. And these shows and this was verbatim. These shows are to teach you how to work. There's 50 right. people out there. They don't care about your spots. They want you to make them feel something. Mm-hmm. So, right. So he would let the heel go out. And then as the baby, as the baby, right before the baby faces, music is supposed to hit. He'd pull that baby face and he'd say cage get your ass out there and he'd tell whoever to hit cages music and then they would have to wrestle on the fly on the fly same time figure it out Mm -hmm. cage up and that's all he'd say you're up and then he'd send them and yeah that's awesome he did that well we were doing dcw which was non-contract it was a show we're a little show we were doing in davis arena after like obw shows and stuff and um he would have to to be more of an atmosphere. You have everybody around the ring, all the guys around the ring, just to pound on the ring and right, right, and whatever. So we would do. Remember when we would they would draw names at the desk out of a bucket, and that's who would have to go in, right, and right. wrestle. And this was on like the, our little TV show. Right, and Kenny Bowen was like, "I'm doing the I'm doing the matches tonight." And he would draw two names and go. And then you and have that to was it. That's wild. And yeah, that's right. and that's how you. That's when you know you're good. Right. And it did. I was, it, I was so, um, you know, confidence as far as who I was or like just feeling like, Oh, maybe I don't belong or, you know, the walking on eggshells when you first go up to television of all those things. But one thing that I was very confident in was my ability to, if something messed up, I was going to be able to fix it. If we didn't do, because television wrestling is different. So if something that spot didn't go as planned. I would never go straight back to it because that's dumb, but I would just figure something else out and do some, you know, to get that same kind of reaction. Or I was very confident in my ability to no matter what we were going to get the end result. And if something screwed up, I was going to be able to fix it. And I think for the most part that always happened with the, even with the, I was going to say with the exception of when Trish got hurt and she broke her, shoulder went on that flip bump because it was like a total freak thing but we still got the finished result it was just the first time somebody had gotten seriously hurt in the yeah. ring when i was in there and i was didn't want to hurt her and i was like all worried about 
re-injuring or injuring her more, you know? So right. anyway, yeah, so I was over prepared <laughs> is the word. Hey, you, you, know what, you know, what's funny is you guys, when you went up there, you didn't realize how good you were. Mm -hmm. And when you got up there amongst the stars, you're thinking, but you're not going to say it. I'm better than these motherfuckers. I got this shit. God damn. I had no idea. But you had... didn't know how good you were because you were surrounded by each other. You were getting better and better and everybody's getting better and better pushing each other. And when and once you're a star, you don't you don't practice. You don't put out. You're right. busy being over posing, looking in the mirror, looking at yourself. I bet she, she had her lights out. Huh? She had her lights out. That's no, what she had that butt pooch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good pose. You know, I got about 642 of them. I'll oh, just yeah. Hit. Yeah, that was the joke in what Wavell Star would say in my book of poses. Oh, your poses. <laughs> I love a hey, good finger point. You said you missed, uh, you, you avoided the um, the hour broadways. Rips yes. already said how, how good you were and all that, all that good stuff. But... Did you ever get the get the fuck out of the ring from Rip in in practice? Did you ever get I had the seen, um 